Flash Player, the backbone of the early internet and the most advanced web development tool ever, in 2002. While most people associate Flash with animation, probably because of its rebranding as an animation program, it began as a kind of web development tool which was used to host and create web content. That's right, from Homestar Runner's tunes, games, characters, downloads, store, and emails, Flash Player pushed everybody to the limit. Flash was an industry standard for interactive web development, and eventually people got super creative and used it for game development, including all of the large corporations. That's right, from Disney to Disney, every large media group was making Flash games. Now, while Disney's Club Penguin was massive, its audience at its peak was surprisingly dwarfed by the audience of Pop Tropica. Pop Tropica was, I mean is, a children's Flash game created by Pearson, the textbook company who's owned by f***ing Viacom, that other large scary media conglomerate. That's right, the same company who charges you 30 bucks for this abomination also charges you $500 for the globalization of world politics. You know, their real heavy hitting franchise, student debt. Pop Tropica is essentially a point and click adventure game that's educational adjacent. I say adjacent because they'll certainly show you subjects you'd expect to see in school books, but they don't really tell you much about them. I mean, look, it's Mansa Musa. I I'm sure someone learned about him at some point, but here he is just standing around. Pop Tropica was huge, spawning graphic novels, video games, and all sorts of other merchandise, but up until about a year and a half ago, I hadn't even heard of it. It wasn't until I made my Neopets video and I started receiving requests for every single internet game ever that it was on my radar. It was then when I figured I might as well take a look at it. So let's take a minute and check out this soon to be forgotten classic. But first, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. If you haven't heard by now, Raid Shadow Legends is this epic in the dark RPG that is taking the mobile gaming landscape by storm. Raid Shadow Legends has over 10 million players all gained within the last few months. And it's totally free. In Raid Shadow Legends, you can collect over 400 champions, knights, orcs, elves, and more. All to play within Raid Shadow Legends. This game has something for everyone, whether it's collecting champions, the story, or combating other live players, it's no wonder why Raid has almost a perfect score in the Google Play Store. And for new players, there's an awesome new rewards program that gives you daily login rewards for the first 90 days of play. So join the fun and download Raid Shadow Legends by using my link in the description and you'll get 50,000 free silver and a free epic champion as a part of the new player program. Thank you again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Pop Tropica was initially released in 2007. Being the brainchild of Jeff Kinney, the author of Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Pop Tropica has that same energy with a childish but appealing art style and a sense of humor to match. Although many others were involved, of course, Kinney surprisingly had a pretty direct involvement with Pop Tropica, even getting down into the nitty gritty and apparently doing some coding for the game's website. It's even speculated that Kinney's alias in the game was that of Comic Kid, an in-game character who would also occasionally write blogs. He would appear in update videos and even would hold meetings about the game's creative direction. It's cool to hear how involved he was because often celebrity involvement only goes so far into these kinds of things. When I started playing the game, I was surprised to learn it wasn't just another hub-based social MMO. Instead, it was a genuinely pretty fun and well-built point-and-click style adventure game with some platforming involved. Okay, so if I jump off here, can I float down and... Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. There will be tears. When booting up the game, the first thing you have to do is make a character. You select a name from a preset list. Oh, f***. Okay, what? What's your name? Dude, my name's gonna be Orange Chicken. <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's like all I eat. Because you are what you eat, and Orange Chicken is like the only thing I eat besides Tyson chicken nuggets and Kraft macaroni and cheese. It's a part of the three food groups. Movement, unfortunately, isn't tied to the WASD keys or those other things that also move you around. Instead, your character moves around depending on where you click on the screen with your mouse. Unlike some point and click adventure games, your characters won't just go to a location you click on. You have to guide them with the arrow in order to avoid obstacles as if it were a traditional platformer. You use the arrow to jump, walk, run, and crawl, and let me tell you what, I hate controlling it this way. This is the reason why I can't play Animal Crossing 
City Folk. However, my rent payments don't depend on playing City Folk, but it does depend on finishing this video, so we continue. Jumping on the air balloon takes you to the Pop Tropica World over world, where you can select from a bunch of different themed islands to not only play, but to learn. Now, there used to be a lot more islands, and apparently when new islands would be added, it was a huge deal. But now, only some of what used to be remains. I'm not going to be playing every single island within Pop Tropica. I'm going to be playing a lot of them, but I don't find it necessary to dissect every single corner of this game. Oftentimes, especially for my online games and MMO reviews, people criticize my review for not getting to much later parts of the game or later parts of the game that people consider to be more fun. But my philosophy is, if I'm not enjoying the first 10 to 20 hours of a game, why am I going to put the effort in to get to the quote-unquote fun part? If I'm playing something for the first time, it should be immediately fun or interesting. I shouldn't have to do heavy lifting in-game work for 20 hours before I start to enjoy the game. Fortunately for me, Pop Tropica is fun. Many islands start off by dropping you into a location with a problem. You have to talk to the locals to figure out what's going on and then interact with the environment to figure out exactly how to solve that problem. While the islands range in difficulty from one skull to three skulls, I haven't really found anything too difficult besides platforming with the mouse. Whoa! F <laughs> uh, I don't get this frustrated playing the games. I, I, I do not get frustrated playing games like this. The game definitely wants you to be able to figure out what to do. This isn't like playing that one song for that one guy in Ocarina of Time. If you spend enough time wandering around, you could eventually figure out what to interact with in order to progress in the game. However, the answers aren't immediately handed to you and you're not explicitly guided where to go. It's a good balance between clues and experimentation that I do have trouble finding in many similar adventure games. Now that isn't to say that I didn't get lost at times or I didn't figure something out way too easily, but it always felt fair. The levels themselves aren't too big, which makes going from one end to the other trying to figure out how characters and items interact less of a chore than I was expecting. It expects you to try to interact with every item. If something sticks out, you need to use it. Like this sailor doesn't want you to have a key he's holding, but there's a bucket of water above his head. You pour the water on him and he says, thank God it's only water. You can pick up the bucket and eventually you see an octopus spitting out ink. Hey, watch it. Oh, ooh. Well, it's just a water. It's just water, so it won't stain. Okay. Cool. Can I, can I get the thing now that I've spilled that on you? What should I, empty bucket, interesting. Oh, oh, I need to get the, uh, I need to get oil, uh, ink from this, the octopus. So it does stain. Yeah, look at these context clues I'm picking up on. You're able to make the connection very easily. Now I want Fruit Loops. I really, I really can't put my finger on why. Time Tangled was the first island I beat. In it, you have a speak and say that takes you to different times to interact with historical figures and objects of historical significance. All you really need to do is find objects that are in times they don't belong and return them to their rightful place. Easy enough, but once you start having to platform, that's another thing entirely. I don't know how to get that. I, I really, I, I don't know how to get to that metal. Like I am, I am defeated. Okay. Please, no, no! I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm sweating with frustration. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. <sighs> Your character is just so agile, doing flips all over the place. It's difficult to judge how high or how far the character will jump and flip, so platforming is nearly impossible. I'm gonna jump from here and float down, no. I'm like a hundred and I'm 100,000% done with this. Most of the difficulty from the game comes from the faulty controls because it feels out of your control. In the Mission Atlantis series, there's a part where you have to guide a jellyfish to enter this certain area. You have to avoid obstacles, make sure it won't disappear off screen, and fight the controls. This took me like a half hour to do because there's so much that can go wrong at any second. Ah! Excellent, excellent, excellent. No, no, you get back here. You get back here. No, no, no. Okay, stay with me, please. All right, before the eel gets back, come down here. 
Yes. No, 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 no. Don't despawn. Don't despawn. Oh my god. <laughs> Just shock me, end it all, Mr. Eel. Well, I think the platforming adds variety. I really wish I could use the keyboard and mouse together. I know a lot of children's games prefer to go with an easy control scheme, but this is not easy whatsoever. Please. All right, Pumpkin, this is called Pop Tropica. Um, so, you wanna say something? All right, so in this game, I gotta find the Sphinx. And uh, to find the Sphinx, Pumpkin, what I have to do is go to the Sphinx. You know, Pumpkin, I feel as your father that I should be giving you some life advice. And I feel the best thing I could say is deep down, we're all a Sphinx. Uh, for me, I like riddles. And for you, you're a cat. So I think we can all learn something from a Sphinx. Um, as long as we can get above it. Oh yeah, and occasionally there's boss fights, like the Hydra and Zeus on Mythology Island. Zeus has such a high health, and while it's easy not to die, hitting him over and over again is just dull, and it goes on forever. And then the first time I beat Zeus, the game froze, and I had to restart and do it all over again. Of course, when you beat these islands, you also get coinage, which can be spent on clothes and accessories as well as pets. This is Mr. Burrito. He's my pal and I love him. Look at my Senor Burrito. I love him. Excuse me. I enjoyed what I played of Pop Tropica. I streamed it quite a bit, so it was fun interacting with those who enjoyed it when it was popular. Point and click adventure games are fun, relaxing, and rewarding for when you figure them out, and Pop Tropica is really no exception to this. So anyways, if you played Pop Tropica before, what is your favorite island, whether it's still on the website or not? And for the rest of you out there, have you heard of Pop Tropica? Because I didn't until about a year and a half ago. And if you haven't heard of Pop Tropica, what other web or online games do you want me to take a look at that I haven't already? So leave those comments down below, leave a like, do all of that stuff, please. So Pop Tropica is funded through ads and a members only program. And while usually for videos like this, I will spend money for a membership, there's not really extra content. You just get more money, exclusive items, and XP boosts. So there's not a lot I'm missing by not paying for it. Damn, I really want Fruit Loops for some reason. As far as spinoffs and other junk, Pop Tropica had a line of graphic novels that expanded on the lore of Pop Tropica, like it being a region with a series of undiscovered islands all adjacent to each other. That's cool, I guess. I love how Jeff Kenny sneakily adds a quote up here as if he wasn't in every meeting for the series. This is like me using my alternate account to retweet myself. I'm not fooling anyone. There was both a DS and a 3DS game, which were both surprisingly faithful adaptations of the browser game developed by Ubisoft. And best of all, there's a guide that gives very simple insight onto the creation of Pop Tropica Islands, and even has a tool for creating your own island. There was a postcard right in the front cover because apparently there was a contest that allowed creators to pitch their own island for the game. The winner was Arabian Nights Island, but no island is as good as my pitch. Island. No, clearly I'm writing the perfect pitch. This isn't just what I would like, this is what everyone would like. Here we got Pterodactyl Island. All right, so let's go through this. Get started in style. Before we design our characters and scenes, we draw an image that sets the look for the entire island. Uh, so here we got Pterodactyl riding on a skateboard, wearing a shirt that says no rules, because on Pterodactyl Island, there are no rules. And additionally, we drew that Pterodactyl with a Starbucks coffee cup, uh, because Pterodactyls aren't supposed to drink Starbucks coffee, but as you can see on Pterodactyl Island, there are no rules. Here they kind of break down all the basic questions they have to answer before they start designing an island. So for Pterodactyl Island, where does the story take place? Pterodactyl Island. What problems will the player need to solve? Too many pterodactyls. What characters will help the players? A good pterodactyl. What character will try to stop the players? A bad pterodactyl. What kind of challenges will the players face? A pterodactyl with a knife. Will players get any special powers or abilities? No. Uh, create your cast of characters. Uh, so as you can see, they kind of have some examples from Pop Tropica and a bunch of blank sheets uh, to create your characters. Uh, here's all the characters I created for Pterodactyl Island. Uh, as you can see, they're all pterodactyls, all wearing sunglasses, all with the no rules shirt, which is the customary wear on uh, Pterodactyl Island. Please consider my, uh, my island for the island creation contest. 
Jeff Kinney. When looking back on Pop Tropica, to me, it's such an enigma. I mean, it had more users than Club Penguin, apparently, but I heard so many less people talking about it. That could be my age, but I think that may just be the nature of the game style. Club Penguin being a social experience makes it categorically different. People remember games like that not just because they're charming and fun, but because they interacted with and made friends on it. Pop Tropica is a single player experience. While Club Penguin had incentive to continue, Pop Tropica is a game you could play only once. And although you could decorate your character, there's not really a reason to keep your account around. And if you didn't like the game, you didn't want to continue to play. I bet there's tons of kids who forgot passwords, made second accounts, played once during computer class at school, or just plain forgot about it. As of today, Pop Tropica is still around, but with Flash players being officially unsupported in major browsers in just over a year, it's hard to tell if it'll stick around. While there is an app version, it hasn't updated in a while. The screen doesn't even stretch out to my iPhone 10. I know people still hop on this game, but it's just a Flash game hosted on a website. It's like any other game that gets older. People move on and play other things. Some may go back to enjoy it, but instead of the game sitting on a shelf, it's a file taking up space and financial resources on a server. If the game stops being worth the server space, it'll eventually get taken down. And while it may or may not be close, it will be taken down someday. I really enjoyed Pop Tropica, and that's a pleasant surprise because more often than not, when I take a look at these old Flash or web games, I'm not really crazy about them. But at least for Pop Tropica, I wasn't really crazy about the platforming. God, no. Okay, from there, and yes, oh my god, yes. Holy sh- Anyways, if this is your first video of mine, please check out some of my other stuff, subscribe, do all that basic junk. Also, I have all my social media and my streaming platforms linked in the description, so if you wanna check those out, feel free to. Other than that, have a good day, and I will see you next week.